because I was, uh, yeah, once again, I developed uh, some software but because I was really annoyed by <laughs> that things are not working. So this is like one of the, one of the, uh, one of the things coming out, coming out of here. So what is the problem I tried to solve with this project SPML for humans? And it's basically, um, um, yeah, like, like I said, like an interactive report humans can somehow understand. And SPML, it's the de facto standard for computational models. And um, yeah, it's a machine readable XML format, but um, this makes it very nice for computers, but not so nice for, for normal people like, like me interacting with the computers. So it's difficult to read, comprehend, interpret uh, by humans directly. And normally people say, um, don't interact with SPML directly. It's a computer format, but if, what, what else should you do if there is no tool to interact with it? So like uh, somehow we needed an, um, uh, an abstraction layer for that. So the idea was like uh, to develop such an abstraction layer, which allows like to communicate, uh, communicate models to collaboration partners. This is one of my main problems that I have a lot of um, collaboration partners, which uh, work with different modeling frameworks or like are really from the um, biomedical field but not uh, don't have much technical background and somehow you have to discuss with them okay this is in the model and and so on this does look like that here's the mathematics and they definitely don't if they see this code they or like xml they like they are too afraid so yeah what we did is basically we developed spml for humans this is an interactive spml report which has navigation between the spml object it's a web application so you don't need any installation you can just go on the web page um, please don't go or everybody on the web page right now because I want to show a demo. <laughs> but um, yeah, exactly. And um, you have um, a search functionality. And um, especially for me, very important, you can resolve and render metadata because I, I can't work much with the actual um, <laughs> KB00005695. For me, it's more important that this is glucose or something else. Yeah, it has support for hierarchical models, has support for SPML distrib with distribution and uncertainties, supports S um, SPML FPC, and you can import um, uh, combined archives. Um, very interestingly, um, we have a nice URL endpoint, which allows direct integration in tools, workflows, web pages, and presentations. So if you have a model, it's somewhere on the web, and you want a nice report for that, just use this, add this URL link somewhere, and then you can, uh, then can uh, use the report. So uh, this is how it looks. And then let's try if we can, uh, whew, I probably have to go leave this mode so that I can click the link. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, huh. This is a demo. Why can't I click the link because it's down here. Ah, okay, here. So I click the link, proof that, I <laughs> that this works. And then you get like this um, nice report. Basically, you get um, everything imported as a, a combined archive. You have a manifest and then the model, and then you have an overview over the different objects. And if you click on the objects, you get basically the metadata information. And if you have like annotations in there, the uh, ontology terms are resolved and you can see what, what is in there. Um, this is directly now the model loaded from, from, from bio models. You can, um, yeah, basically in this, I don't know, not much um, to see here. Um, I think the most in interesting thing is like um, the filter functionality. So if you're interested in, um, I don't know, if something is in a certain compartment one or so, you basically just type it in here and then you get the subset of, uh, of information. This is very useful if you have like very large models and so on. Um, yeah, one last demo. Um, this also works with um, um, composite models, which is very inter interesting. So there are some examples here. And then you get, of course, an, uh, Ooh, hopefully it should work. Uh, ooh, this is live demonstration. No, I broke it. Okay, so yeah, uh, this is very, uh, yeah, this should normally work. So let's see, let's try another model. Yeah. Ah, no, I know what happens. This is even a bug, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, sorry, uh, okay. Sorry, this is a bug. Uh, <laughs> basically, like the search uh, is not, uh, it, it, the search was applied for my last model here. And of course, I didn't have such an object in there. So, okay, no worries, everything works. Um, okay, and then you have multiple models in here, which are basically composite models and so on. And um, especially interesting for the composite models, you have things like ports so that you have the interaction points between the different models. You have full unit, unit support and rendering. And um, yeah, like, like always, like you get um, the annotation. I find this very useful, um, works pretty well. There, of course, it's a bit um, alpha, but um, alpha better. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, I, I couldn't work without that. Yeah, so thanks a lot. I hope I didn't take too long. Thanks, Matthias, that's great. Um, does anyone have a question? 
if you have a question, if you can raise your hand, that'll be great. And I can pass the mic over to you. So Martin, I see your hands raised. Oh, you're muted, I'm afraid. Yeah, I was too quick in clicking the unmute. Um, thank you, Matthias, for this uh, great uh, tool. And did, did you compare it um, with, um, I mean, more than 10 years ago, there was SBM Ultra Data, I'm sure you know about that. Uh, did, did you compare uh, about that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it was uh, the state of the art at that time, of course. And uh, there, there you could um, create um, yeah, text uh, reports on SDML that also could uh, create a PDF uh, file for, from that human readable. I know, I, I, I multiple problems. The first thing is like, uh, okay, this is not uh, interactive. You can't do filtering. The LaTeX is really ugly. Uh, PDF is not a good format. There are ton of, tons of problems. You don't have metadata. And um, yeah, uh, main, main thing I di didn't even say, say like, um, here you have the interactivity. Of course, you can navigate between the things. If you add the species, you can go directly to the compartment. For the compartment, you can see, okay, here's only one species in. But you can navigate between, the, uh, between all the objects. Uh, so this is also like, basically, it's it's for exploring of the model and with a um, static pdf this is basically um, <laughs> not working i had uh, one short addition to that before i had a static html report and basically i said like this was like i, I saw like I, I need this interactivity to explore like okay where especially if your model is wrong or something is not working where could be the bug be and without looking at the xml so um yeah um oh, i lost my my, my touch here but yeah okay um yeah so yeah i don't know like the static things are not really really working and for me it's more also like um i don't know i see this as a as a stepping stone to something bigger perhaps like as a perspective like uh, um the plan is like to do the same thing with the uh, sedml files in here um that you could do the um, um same exploration that you can render all the pngs which should be pretty easy if, um and um and at some point that this will be a model editor um, because I have all the objects, I have a JSON serialization. So basically it's just uh, adding a bit of functionality to click on that and change names and so on. And then you would have a full full tool for um, updating your SPML also. So yeah. Thanks Matthias. Uh, Henning, do you have a quick question you want to ask Matthias? Matthias has already started to answer it, which is about the longer term perspective. This looks lovely and we'd like to link to it. Um, the question is a bit, what is the production plan, quality plans for it? You said, please don't go all to the same side and I, it's alpha. So if, I, I don't, as you know, we would like to link, if we want to link then to something which is stable, but it looks lovely, I think. Definitely, like I have to say, like I have sufficient computer resources in the background. I just have to say like for the, um, the some features were really just implemented last night, basically the omics support and so on to show this off to <laughs> today. So um, so it's like, uh, it's more like it, it's stable than uh, enough computer sources. Um, um, the hosting is also, you could also self host it. Um, I have Docker containers, Docker scripts um, to bring this up. Um, so I, I would say from this perspective, it's pretty stable. It's just like some of the features were just added like basically last night so um yeah um but there is um long-term maintenance and definitely for the next four or five years um I, I will use this um and there will be students working on that yeah um so yeah but we can uh, talk more in detail yeah. and i can yeah. um, um yeah uh, provide support and so on okay thanks thanks very much matthias okay so